So let's talk about our agenda today. The number one, what we want to do some very interesting exercise, uh, which is called making our money grow. Okay, so I'm on sl uh, slide number one right now. Uh, so what we really want to talk about in that exercise, and I'll, I'll explain in a few minutes, that you know all about really understanding the practical aspect of how the money works, right? And and it'll, we'll go into a lot of different kind of details, and hopefully they'll help you relate uh, a lot of things you see around you and where money gets used. And we also do some interesting problem with that too. So we'll apply math in, in learning about these concepts, okay? So we wanna do that. So I wanna spend roughly 40, 45 minutes uh, on going through that one. And, uh, and then after that, I've assigned uh, some tests to you guys like quizzes, uh, AMC8, uh, uh, quizzes and also pre-algebra quizzes. Uh, now let's talk about our main exercise for today, make my money grow, right? So we'll talk about the strategy, how you can make your money grow. So there are a few fun things we'll start with. We'll talk about millionaire effect. We wanna know that what do you think what millionaires do, right? How they become millionaires. So we'll talk about some of those things about the millionaire. We'll do some fun quiz. I will uh, let you answer some of the question and then I also have the answer for those ones. I did not create those answers, but those answers are there. So we'll validate what you think about millionaires, but how, what the reality is about millionaires, right? So that's just to get you started. Uh, next thing we'll talk about now, we, we want, I mean, we talked about millionaire and hopefully you want to be, become a millionaire or, and if you want to become millionaire or whatever you want to be, become, all right, let's, you can talk about what your dreams are, what you want to become and what kind of money you want to make. If, you know, money is one of your things that you want to achieve. Like when we are talking about money, so let's talk about money. And then we'll talk about how you can fulfill your dreams. How can you make money? How, you know, what, when you make money, what happens with that? How you spend money? How do you budget? Uh, and how can you make it grow? You know, math, how do you, different ways of saving money, okay? And, and when you're, I mean, when you're saving money, you also spend money. So we'll talk about as a consumer, you go to shopping complex and you say, oh, there is a discount of 20%. But if you buy two, that you get an additional discount of uh, 20%. But if you have a coupon, then you get 10 more percent. What does it really mean? What's, you know, so we'll talk some of these things with type permits and, and yeah, uh, okay. So now I am on slide three, millionaire facts. So that's where I want you to hear from you. Uh, now let's talk about each questions and let's see what you have to say. All right. Uh, so most millionaires inherited their uh, wealth. What does inheritance mean? Just basically, I mean, this is what the sentence is. You need to say it's true, false. What do you think, right? Inheritance means is that when somebody becomes a millionaire, they get money from somebody they get from their parents or from neighbors or whatever somehow they inherit that money is that true that most millionaires actually inherit the money or they make become millionaire themselves and if you you know what kind of ratio that you say how many you know percent are origin you know are inherit money when they become millionaire or how many what percentage of people actually earn that much money to become millionaire Okay, let's start with you, number one. Let's we'll we'll take turns. So, number one, your turn to speak. Um, I think that this sentence is false, and that actually, seventy-five percent of million millionaires actually make the money. Good point. Uh, so actually, the answer for the correct answer for this is roughly eighty percent of the millionaires are first generation wealthy. Means that they do not inherit any money and they become millionaire by making uh, money themselves. Okay. All right. So that's the first question. The second go question goes to the second person. Uh, millionaires are rarely self-employed. So what does self-employed means? Uh, number two. Uh, yeah. So self-employed is usually when someone does not work for um specifically like someone else um and i'm not really trying to describe it but um 
Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, it's only that. If, if self-employed means you don't work for others, you work for yourself. That's self-employed. Uh, okay. So the question is, millionaires are rarely self-employed. So is that true or false? Um, I think it's false. Actually, um, they everyone starts somewhere. Like they start working for someone usually. But I think that when they do earn a lot of money, they're usually like a boss because that's usually the people that earn like the most money, the people that kind of like own the business or whatever. Yeah. That. Yeah. There are different scenarios, but your answer is absolutely right. The answer is false because uh, more millionaires are self-employed. There are less millionaires which work for others. So that's kind of, really tells you, you know, if you want to make more money, you want to be self-employed, but that's not a hard and fast rule, but generally the more rich people are the people who run their own businesses. I mean, more than 50%. Okay. Let's go to the next question. All millionaires wear expensive clothes and drive new cars. Uh, that's a very interesting question. And that goes to uh, number four. I believe that they do wear expensive clothes and drive new cars because they're able to afford it. Okay, so that's how it feels like that. We, when people have more money, they spend more money. But the interesting aspect of you know, what data says, then when people have more money, then they are more conscious about money too. And, and what data says that like richer people, more than 50% people don't even spend more than $400 buying a suit or and or like drive uh, a very costly car. So basically, the you know the people who make money, they also understand the value of making money, and not necessarily they spend a lot of money on you know showing off. Some people do, but most people don't. I mean, especially they when they make money. Okay. Uh, next question uh, goes to number five. Uh, most millionaires earn more than five hundred thousand dollar per year half a million dollar per year so, so number five um i think that's um true because uh let's say uh jeff bezos right he's not a millionaire but he's a billionaire and uh, -huh. uh he makes like he makes a lot of money because he has a big company called amazon and uh i actually um did some research and it says most millionaires uh, have a net worth of 1.6 million per yeah. annually. So, yeah, I think that's true. But that answer is wrong answer. Uh, oh. And why is that? Okay, let's talk about it briefly. So millionaires means that they have net worth of one million. So at any given point, like at at a, some point in time, my total value is one million. But it doesn't mean that I weren't made all that money in one year. So many people actually become millionaire by saving money, not by making that much money in one year. Uh, so only less than 50% of millionaires make actually more than $500,000 uh, per year. So very, very few people make less than $500,000 or, or half a million dollar per year, but they are still millionaire. Uh, that's through their savings are investing money into different things, right? They can invest into stock and houses and other kind of things. So kind of interesting thing. It's, you know, I want to talk about this. That generates you interest that what we think about these millionaires and what the reality looks like. Okay, next question. Uh, most millionaires drop out of college to start work. Uh, and the example is people will quote the example, Bill Gates, he dropped out. A lot of these cool guys, a lot of rich people drop out from the, the call uh the college but is that true that most people do it uh, the question goes to number one i mean personally i don't think that most millionaires drop out of college because like usually you get the information from college to get much better at saving money and working to get more money so i think you wouldn't drop out of college your answer is correct Actually, four out of five millionaires are college graduates. It means at least 80% people are, millionaires are college graduates. Uh, so that's kind of a myth 
that yeah if you drop out from the college you can become a, mil- a millionaire so it's really important to understand that yeah college studying plays a very very important role in actually making money and people feel yeah the you know some of these cool guys dropped out of the college so we can drop out too and we can make money but that doesn't work out most of the time actually it worked out for them but they are rare uh okay final thing and that will go to number 2 who couldn't speak before uh it is impossible to save enough to be a millionaire uh i am like we i think we all know the answer but let's hear this from number 2 i'm i'm not sure um i think actually no because they're millionaires so i'm going to say that they earn more right so we're talking about the question what? it is impossible to save enough to be a millionaire is it impossible to save uh, save money to become a millionaire do we need to always earn that much or we can do the saving to become a millionaire is true or false i mean that's true you could save to be a millionaire but you won't always be a millionaire if you keep spending the money too right so yeah there's yeah, different i agree okay there are a lot of different views on 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 that but the idea is you know there's a, uh, and and that's where we'll focus in the rest of the class that's why this question is more important to uh that if you want to become a millionaire right in your lifetime let's assume your life is you know uh, 100 years or retirement is 65 years so let's think about retirement age you know at the time of retirement you want to be millionaire so for becoming a millionaire that you only need to earn $2600 a year what it really means roughly less than $250 a month if you save to i mean not earn save if you save roughly $250 a month every month from the age of 22 to 65 you will have more than uh, 1 million dollar i mean uh, that's of course crazy. Yeah that's great. We will talk about that. It's <laughs> how you can make that much money. It looks like you know saving plays a really really important uh, role in 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 becoming rich. It's not earning that plays a role, it's saving that plays a very important role. Right? So we'll talk about some of these things. So what I want to do in this year let's dream, you know, and let's t- talk about what do you want to become? Like how much money you want to become? What do you want to become? and what kind of money you want to make uh when you grow up uh so let's we quickly take the turn and that we'll use that data on the the next session all right so let's start uh with first person um what what i want to be yeah um i actually don't know at the current moment but i know that i i'm not trying to find a job for the money of i want to find a stable job that i um I'm passionate about and to get enough money to live a, a like a stable um life and have enough money to like for 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 living and being able to have like a decent house and like being able to provide for myself or if I need to provide for others but I don't want to make a I'm not I don't want to work to make a lot of money at the cur- I mean if I do get money that's nice but that's not my main goal. Would 500,000 a year be enough or like uh, Actually 500,000 um, a year. Uh, that's a lot of money. Really? Uh, um, that's what you're talking 500 500,000 a year only not even million only 50% of the millionaire make that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to make your that's let's make that goal. Uh um, let's say your goal is 500,000 that's fine. Um, but that's a lot of money. Um I want to be a biomedical engineer. All right. All right. And, and I believe and a awesome. good amount to make a year is about maybe just under 100,000 like maybe like just over 50,000. Okay. Okay. Oh, I mean for the for the analysis, analysis, analysis 100,000. 100, okay, sure. Okay. So, uh I want to be a robotics engineer. Robotics engineer. cool and uh, how much money do you think you want to make uh maybe uh, around 70 to 80,000 
70 to 80, cool. Yeah, number three is the richest so far. Good. Um, I want to be a stocks investor. Oh, investor, cool. And okay. All right. I'm not sure about the money. Okay, your daddy is not going to pay for your thing, so you need to make some money. Mm. Like per year? Yeah, annual income, yeah. 600,000? 600,000. Yeah, when you get richer, don't forget, you know, that I, I try to help you with math. So share 5% <laughs> of your salary with me. I want to become a scientist and I want to make 250k to 300k. All right, 250k. You all are rich guys, okay? Okay. We'll give you some. No, worries. we'll give you some of our money. All right. Let's see who will give me money. All right. I really want you all of you to be really successful. Okay. Okay. So I'm slide five. What are we are looking at here is the earning statement, right? So what happens is, uh, and and I'll ask you guys if you know uh, this. So when uh, we make money, right? For example, when I every month we get money, right? So even if our annual money is hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand, three thousand, but what happens is uh, the people who are employed, right? Employed means the the doing the job. Uh, they get this money divided into the small parts, right? So what happens is you don't get all two hundred thousand uh, dollar a last month of the last year. So what happens is that that you know, I mean, to, for simplification, let's say the salary is $240,000 per year. So what it really means, every month you are supposed to get $20,000. So what happens is generally to make things easier, what company do they have, let's say they give the money twice a month, right? So every month you are supposed to get $10,000 a month, right? So when you get a $10,000 for that month and this person, Sarah, is getting uh, uh, only... Twelve hundred ninety dollar uh, in in that uh, half monthly cycle, right? So in 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 this her paycheck, her total is twelve hundred ninety dollar. So when somebody gets the money, then money statement looks like that. And when their people are employed, they need to do the same thing, but they need to do separately because their income is not fixed. Sometimes they may get in one month more money, next month they get less money. So their their money get fluctuated by how much you know, or revenue did they get, but uh, but for salaried employees, it's kind of more like constant thing, right? It's okay, you have X like dollar of salary you get every year that divides into monthly salary that if you get twice a month, that becomes half. So that's what is happening with this person. So she is getting this kind of money, $1,290. That's her total earnings. So what it happens, she, she worked 80 hours. Uh, her hourly rate is 15. Of course, if you get this kind of money, that's not going to be enough for you. If you're thinking about, uh, so basically one of the rule is that if you get money, you know, you're working uh, seven and a half hour a day. Uh, so, so if you want to make $200,000, right, in a year, and then you divide it by 2000 hours. So there are 2000 working hours in a year, right? So if you wanted to calculate your daily, so hourly earning, so if you want to make $200,000, it means that every hour, how much do we need to make? Your hourly rate is how much? Um, $20? No, $200,000 divided by 2,000 hours. $100? Um, no, yeah, yeah. Ten, no. $100. $100. Okay. Right, $100. So you can decide, you know, if you want to make, uh, you want to earn $500,000, then your hourly rate will be $250, uh, right? That's a rough number. I mean, different people may have different working number of hours, so it could change. But just around generally gives you an idea that if you want to make uh, uh, X amount of money, and if you work seven and a half hours a day, that basically means that, uh, I mean, keeping your holiday, you know, uh, some of their weekends aside, so 200 you know, you don't count for weekend because you don't work on those days, I'm assuming. And so basically the year, yeah, every year you only have 2,000 working hours, 2,000 working hours, you divide by your number, you get generally if 
uh, you get the idea. If you want to make only hundred thousand dollar, you only need to get fifty dollar per hour. Okay, you get the number uh, really clear. So now you get that much money, right? That this person is making twelve hundred ninety dollar. But do you see a lot of other things are in here? So do you know what these things are? They are tax. There are we see four things here. I'll quickly talk about that. And, and I won't go into a lot of detail of this, but I want you to understand, right? When you make the money and you know, and what really happens with that money, it looks like, oh, we made $200,000, but it's actually not $200,000 that comes to your bank account. It's much lesser than that, right? So what's happening in this person's case that uh, out of $1290 she made, there was $180 of federal tax. What is federal tax means? There is a, a central government or, you know, basically, uh, who is our prime minister right now? Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Yep. That, right? And that government takes away, that takes away the federal tax. Uh, that's for it. In her case, is $180. And then there's a province, there's a provincial tax, right? In this case, this person was working in Northwest Territories. Their taxes are different. Ontario is one of the well, you know, well, the taxes are very high, so the taxes will be higher. So then you pay the taxes to your provincial government. So that's the second part of the tax. And third part of the taxes, yeah. yeah. So what the CPP means is a Canadian pension plan, right? So you uh, you pay for pension plan. So the idea is that when you pay the pension plan, when you are you retire, you may get some money. And then fourth part is the employment insurance. So so idea is that yeah, if you for some reason you have to take a break from work right and it could be that yeah you're out of job or you know uh, and you you know and you're like more your mom uh, took time off from the work because she was pregnant and she needed to take care of you so government offered some plans where they gives you some are like money back right basically that so you it's it's an insurance insurance what the the fundamental around insurance is that you give a little bit of money uh, every month, but when you need it, right, in case of emergencies or in case of, you know, you want to have planned vacation, not vacation, I mean, basically that is, yeah, somebody is having a baby in the house and they want to take some time off to take care of uh, the baby, then you get some money back, right? So like a $2,000 a month, so you can run your family even if you're off. Uh, so that's the idea. So these are the four co components. And the way the tax work in Canada, uh, again, I won't go into the details. There are brackets. I, mean, I won't talk too much about that today. But so, so if you make, let's say, income uh, of uh, fourteen thousand uh, dollar a year, then your taxes is like very small, ten percent. Then and you're gonna become thirty thousand. The tax keeps increasing, and and when you start making the salary like two hundred fifty thousand, your tax become almost half. So they have a brackets. As you keep increasing the bracket, your tax becomes uh, higher and higher. Let's say the the bracket from 200,000 above, uh, if you make money 200,000 and more, right? So the bracket of like two, before 200,000, there may be a little different tax, tax bracket, but you know, let's say you're making 200,000 and suddenly that bracket changes to 50%. So in roughly 50% in Canada that if you make $200,000 more, so anything you make above $200,000, let's say if your salary is $300,000. So so between and $300,000, your tax bracket, let's say is 50%. So how much tax you will pay on that on just on that portion of 200 to 300,000, 50%, which is how much will be that tax on between 200,000 to 300,000 bracket. 300k and if the tax bracket is 50 percent so how much tax you are going to pay just for that part, part of the bracket 100 um 100k to 150k no so between 200 and 300k the salary is you made 100,000 so you pay 50 percent so in that part portion you only pay 50k first portion so basically that you could think like is a bracket one bracket two bracket three and they keep increasing that like first is 20 then 30 and then bracket four is uh, 40 and i'm just simplifying it for you and bracket five is 50k right so bracket five is 200 to 300k in this bracket you're paying 50 percent tax so if you pay 300k you in this bracket you paid 50k in the 
track this before it's only like let's say 150 to 200,000 there is track bracket is only 40 so in that bracket you uh, for 50k you paid 40 percent tax so you only pay 20k in there and there's a 30 percent bracket and that's 30 percent bracket goes from 100 to 150 so you paid only uh for 50,000 30 percent tax how much is that 15k and it kept getting lower and lower right so basically what happens is lower you make lower tax you pay higher you make higher tax you pay so again i want to talk too much about that but the idea is that there are brackets right so that's how you pay the tax in this case the person is paying x amount of tax so but rule of thumb is if you're making hundred thousand of um a k of 100k of money or let's say 150k of money you are roughly paying 33 percent of tax or one third of your money goes towards the tax right you make less less percentage but generally if you're getting around between 100 and, and like 200,000 k so your one third uh, money goes into income tax so what it really means if you make let's say 150,000 uh, dollar is is your income so how much will be the tax roughly you know let's say you know, you could say average tax is 33% or one third so how much money uh, tax you pay um 50k 50k so what's left is you actually in your account only you get 100,000 uh, per year okay so let's say if you work in McDonald's and you, you know, and they only pay $16 per hour. So how much money in a year you can make if you only get $16 per hour? Any guesses? 32,000. 32,000. You multiply it by $2,000 roughly. I mean, you could work extra shift. You can make more money, but you make $32,000. Uh, so that's the key aspect right and you 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 should be thinking about if i want to make money that you, you can divide the big number of like annual goal of 2000 like whatever money you want to make to the smaller number okay every hour how much do i need to make and and really you can convert that back to a number if somebody says oh i'll give you uh, x number of uh, dollar per hour then you can convert it back to the annual income very quickly Okay, that's, yeah. Uh, and how does the number 2000 came up? Just think about it, you know, you think in your mind and if you don't know, uh, 2000 hours, I said, I didn't explain it, but that's the exercise for you. You ask your parents, okay, why 2000 hours, uh, right? How this number 2000 came up uh, with, it's pretty important number, uh, okay? And if you don't get the answer from them, yeah, uh, you can ask me in the next class and I can help you out. Uh, you know, I want to talk about this slide. You know, we once we make money, we start thinking about the budgeting process. So we need to to really think that okay. I mean, we previously asked you how much money you want to to make, and the answer was I want to make enough money to to run the house and save some money too, right? Maybe so define how much is enough money, right? So that's where we budget comes in place. We what does budget means is really help us and analyze, uh, you know what we really need to do. And then we'll talk about two different scenarios. And the one scenario is somebody wants to make, let's say uh, 60,000 uh, per annum, 60K per annum, right? And another person wants to make 120K per annum. You can do more analysis, but that's fine. So, so wanted to check if this money is enough for you to live your life the way you want to live it, right? So, how do you figure out that much money is enough or not? Uh, any ideas? The question is, how how do you figure out is 60K enough to live the life you want to live or or not? Or is 120K enough or not enough? How do you figure it out? Well, how much money you're spending on a monthly basis and see if that's enough. Right. Okay, that's one way of doing it. And that's what this budgeting process comes in play. Okay, so let's take the scenario. You think like your whole money is a circle and within the circle, how do you want to fit different things, right? And I made it bigger and you can make it bigger in your case too. Uh, so, so now let's talk about, you know, different things. Let's just think these are the only thing that you need to do, right? I mean, you can add more if you want to add the category. If you're renting the house or you're owning the house, but in case, both cases, you need to give some money, right? You need to pay the interest and insurance and rent or whatever. If you pay the rent, you pay one 
time. But if you're investing in a house, you need to do the, some expenditure. So how much money you want to spend per month? How much money do you think that you spend on rent or, or, or getting a house per month? What's your monthly expenditure for the house? Uh, I'll say I like about half. Tell me the number. $2,000, $5,000 a month, $8,000, $1,000. Um, $1,000. $1,000, okay. Reality of the market is you're saying $1,000, but as of today, uh, if you want to rent, uh, even a one-bedroom condo, it's really cost, the renting itself cost around $1,500. If you want to rent a house, it may cost $3,000 in Toronto. So it's not that cheap. So the reality, that's where you need to think, oh, you know, that 1,000 number may not be enough. By the time you grow up and you're learning in 21, 22, you're going to start making money, that number you need at least $2,000 uh, to rent your own house. Okay, let's put the number $2,000. How much money you need for food? Uh, let's say number four, you want to speak about it. How much money do you think you need uh, for food a month? I'm talking about everything is monthly here. We're like a whole family or just one person? Yeah, assume you're, uh, you're helping your parents and wife and kids. Yeah, everybody. So roughly how much do you need? 800 $800 a month, right? Uh, one way of doing is we think, oh, monthly basis. But another thing, we think on a daily basis. Okay, now you want to break down your big thing, big numbers into the smaller numbers. Okay, I need to think about a day. But generally, I wanted to get the idea. I need to have the breakfast. I need to have lunch. I need to have dinner every day. Uh, so there are three components already every day. The lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, okay, roughly how much does it cost every day for the family? Uh, maybe answer is $200 a day. Uh, so if it's $200 a day, then there are 30 days in a month, or maybe 200 is too much. You don't really then uh, need that much. So maybe you only need $30 a day. If $30 a day is enough for per day, is $30 enough for the family every day? Let, okay, let me ask you now. Whoever was saying $800, $800 in a month is less than $30. Do you think are $30 enough for the food for entire family per day? No. No. How, how much do you think that every day your family will be spending on the food uh, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, all inclusive? If, if you're making your own food, it's enough. If you if you want, it, it's not enough. Okay. Someday you go out, someday you, you do. So I'm just telling you, 800 number is fine, but I'm just telling that's how you could think. You know, in real life, when you're doing budgeting, you always... Well, you say monthly is very difficult. So you break down your milestone monthly. It's a guess. So can I get down to a daily basis? Okay. And within that, or maybe we think about a week. In week, okay, weekdays are different because we always cook and we can we go out. So maybe $800 for weekdays, but maybe I go out on the weekend I, and every time we go out, it's $100. Or there are eight weekend days. So maybe another $400 uh, for eating outside. So my... Expenditure is like twelve hundred dollar, okay. Uh, so, so guys, when you don't speak, just go on on the mute. Uh, there's a lot of noise. Uh, okay, go on mute. All right. Okay, we dropped. You know, somebody dropped. Got dropped. Uh, I think it's. That would be uh, Ari. Yeah. I think I'll be in again. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, I probably need to figure out something else next time. Uh, so, uh, so now the transportation. Uh, transportation, you may take bus, you may have a car. How much money? Uh, number one, how much money do you think we need to have on transportation per month? I would say maybe another 2000 No, 2000 Why 2000 Always qualify, you know? That's what yeah, I want you to I mean, encourage everybody. Of, why why two thousand? First would be um the car renting. Okay, car, own your car, you pay for the car. How much does car cost? That's how you need to think, you know. How much does car cost, roughly? Mm, Ten thousand, I think. All right. Okay. Anybody else agrees with him? What does a car cost, roughly? You not the best car, but something that you can 
you, you, you need when you start your job? How much does that car cost? I think around 25,000. 25. 25,000 is a better estimate. Hmm. Okay. And now 25,000, you let's say you take the loan from the bank and you want to pay off this in five years. So let's say if you want to buy a, get the loan for five years, how much? Uh, so how much uh, you need to pay every year? $5,000. $5,000 a year. And then... Yeah, this but is, then there would also be interest. Yeah, interest. You know, the interest. How much is the interest? Is the uh, actual money or this the interest? How much is the interest you pay? Uh, just let's guess right now, right? Let's say 4% interest on $25,000 a year. That's $1,000 interest easily, right? Okay. Then what else do you need? You need insurance, do you? Um. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then need insurance. Insurance is very costly in Canada. Uh, any guess how much do you need to pay per year when you're young? And this year I'm doing uh, annual. To... Sorry, how much did you say? 3,500. Right. I mean, 3,500 is extreme, but yeah, at least $2,000. Holy. That's... $8,000 a year. Uh, it's, we are not done yet. We are it's still going on. Right. What else is done? What else do you need in the car? You bought, or bought the car. You're paying the insurance. You also need, need the gas. Pay. Gas. How much do you pay for the gas every month? $150. dollars oh, so 200 Right. Okay. What yeah, else? That's monthly. You said that was monthly. That's monthly. Oh, that's monthly. Guys. Sorry, I'm wrong. Yeah, 200 times 12 is $2,400. Or let's say $2,000. $2,000. That's, more... that's, that's basically the insurance combined. It. Yeah, okay. Roughly. You see the number? That's what, you know, we need to think when we are thinking about it. Like how math gets applied here. How we need to think when we do the budgeting. Now, what else is needed when you have a car? Maintenance. Maintenance. Yeah, you know it really well. Okay, so how much is the maintenance? Mm. Average it out. Whatever. Let's say thousand dollar. We are just trying to thousand dollar per year. You know, if it's the old car, it takes that much. Newer car, it less. But let's say thousand dollar per year, just for our sake. Okay, now. Okay. So how much is the total now? Mm. $11,000. $11,000 per year. Mm -hmm. Right? Per year. So, how much so does it cost every month? Um, basically, $1,000. $1,000. Right? So, and what I, I was I, encouraging... I said, yeah, I said $1,000. Right. Like... Okay. So, what I was encouraging to do is... Damn. We can guess a number, but we need to be able to explain how we came up to this number. Right? It's, that's That's where the budgeting comes. I mean, why 1,000? Why not 600? Why not 400, right? Okay, that goes to number three or four, any of those, right? The clothing, how much money do you need for clothing? 